Chris Robert Shaw is joining us here in the studio to say he's uh, angry, wound up, uh, frustrated before we started this about, about all, what you're going to talk about. All, all of those, all the above. above. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the elastic snap for me, Paul. You said this could be one of your most important uh, moments yeah. of uh, in politics. Yeah, politics. Yeah, really. Let's explain. Um, the, the silo thing that you've always talked about and, and you did from within government for a long time, uh, you felt you got nowhere, you came out of government. Um, it appears that the other Crown dependencies heard your call. I don't know if it was directly from you or they were on the same tax, but whatever. They were listening, should we put it that way? And uh, well, they Jer have been Jersey, Jersey said they're listening because yeah. when they went over to a, a unified government approach, they did it eight months after our uh, committee report, which effectively said this is what we need to do. And they referred in their changes to, to our documentation. Right. What then happened was that uh, um, Guernsey, who you know, are under a period of quite radical review under the leader, uh, civil service leader, uh, Paul Whitfield, have now arrived at the position where they're, they're making the most extraordinary radical changes, almost exactly in what line with the, the ones that we propose. So what's happening is that the Isle of Man is doing all the talking and the other Crown dependencies are actually doing the, the taking the acts necessary. So um, we're being left behind. And, and what, what, what's, where, why the elastic has snapped for me finally it is that we're seeing now our government growing once again. And strategic analysis would show clearly and, and without hesitation or doubt that we're going to have to find more money to, to, find, you know, to, to pay towards our nurses, our teachers, our police, our s social workers, etc. In other words, our frontline service. And what we're really doing is we're just growing the government. And the others, the other Crown Dependencies have recognised this issue. It's a strategic issue. It's, a, it's about positioning yourself and your organi organisation properly. And they are squeezing their, their um, layers of civil service and providing funds to push to frontline services. So, for example, Paul uh, Whitfield in, in Guernsey has said, OK, we're going to reduce, uh, bearing in mind they're smaller than us, we're going to reduce our, our civil service, we're going to de-layer it and we're going to, to reduce our civil service by 200 posts, saving £10 million. Pounds. Well, Paul, what are we doing? We're just blundering along in a sort of a, a fog of our own making. Um, our, we're in a state of denial. Our, our civil service is still growing. Is that because there is no willingness to get things changed? Here. Well, what I'm going to do, Paul, is I'm going to ask the Alamo newspapers to publish this open letter. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting letter, I have to say. Um, how they, it's very detailed about how he's going to do it's, what he's going to do to it's, reduce the post. Paul, it's leadership. Hmm. It's clear. It's concise. It's bold. I'm going to ask the newspapers to pu publish this hmm. letter in full, because somehow or other. People like me have got to be able to get across to the people of the Isle of Man that if, if they really want good frontline services, then it's terribly important that we restructure and reorganise our government so that's where the money goes. Um, and, and I also want to give a chance for those senior civil servants and those politicians who are of similar mind, and there are there are people that in you know in government like that. I want to give them the courage to sort of stand up and say. This is what I believe. Right now, we just are not being led properly. Explain how, the, and this less deals with it, that by having cuts, there's always that assumption that you're going to lose something. But they, they, it seems not that at all. he hasn't not at all. He's got it's ways around that. Not at all. It's not about cuts. It's yeah. about, that's the wrong word. Yeah. He's not talking about cuts. He's talking about reorganising and redefining and delivering better services to, to the people of Guernsey. A and lot less, yeah, a lot less top bods, basically, and they're, they're going to yeah. be more amalgamated into, into different areas. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, and this is, and you've heard me talk about this, I don't know how many times, one of the key aspects of all of this for Guernsey and, and for Jersey is that it will enable them to stop thinking in silos and allow them, in strategic terms, to think across the piece. And I've repeated this again and again and again. And another reason my, why my elastic has snapped finally is that as a member of all these policy review committees, I'm one of the few people who can see right across government in quite a lot of detail. And Paul, I cannot tell you how often now I am seeing again and again this issue of strategic failure where 
um, issues come up through a silo or a division within a department and haven't been, as it were, exercised in terms of their importance across government. We, we are failing at the moment quite badly and it, it's becoming a crisis and somehow or other, as an individual, I've got to do what I can to draw people's attention to this, to get them to get people to appreciate that we have got to take the same steps or similar steps as Jersey and Guernsey. It's the very things that we said we would do and are failing to act. Now, over the last year, we've been utterly, well, certain, certain people have been utterly preoccupied with Brexit. They've had a, their, their head in a, a sand bucket marked Brexit. The Chief Minister, I mean. And the point is that there's a huge amount of work to do with Brexit, but it's in many respects, it's about legislation. And so understandably, legislators, bureaucrats rather, have been pre become preoccupied with all a myriad of detail that, that's associated with it, but have failed to realise there's, there's a government to run, there's, a, there's a, you know, a lot of work to do to get ourselves right. And, we've, and certain people have allowed themselves to be thoroughly distracted. Now, that's not acceptable from my perspective because you could say, quite reasonably, that Jersey and Guernsey are in exactly the same position in terms of having to deal with these issues, and yet it hasn't stopped them reinventing their government. Well, I was hoping that the Chief Minister of Guernsey was going to be at the British Irish Council. He didn't make it because he was doing the budget for Guernsey and they're having, uh, the first time they've, they've balanced their books apparently for some time, they've been using their yeah. reserves. Is this all part of it? I mean, do you think they've well, got more well, forward thinking going on down there? Or? Well, I think it's, I think it's very um, interesting to note that despite the fact that they're balancing their books, they're, t they're still taking these very mm. significant and profound changes. Why? Because they recognise coming down the track very fast is a requirement to be able to find more funds to feed into the frontline services. Unfortunately, because of a lack of leadership, we've got too much money being consumed by an amorphous body in the middle of our organisation, yeah. which is effectively protecting itself. This gentleman's a civil servant. How do you, you know, you've still got to get through government. Obviously, they got them on side. I don't, we don't know the ins and outs of it, but back to the Isle of Man, which is, you know, what can you do? What well, can I, Chris Robertshaw do in the last Three years? Is Last, such I've got three years left. And, and, if and I, that's it, isn't it? You if I saying. don't get this message over in the next three years, so people understand that we cannot go, we cannot go into the next administration, and I won't be there, obviously, because this is my last three years, I cannot go into the next administration with the current structure. Therefore, activity, significant activity, must happen now. And people, and I've said this to you before, I think, People out there aren't really interested in this sort of thing. They just want the services right. But somehow or other, if the politicians, if the civil servants won't change themselves, then I'm left with trying to get the message over to people out there to say, tell your politicians, tell your civil servants, they must change what they're doing. It's old-fashioned, out-of-date, clunky, expensive, and it's, a, it's an organisation that's, 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 as it were, introspective. Okay. Its job is to deliver services to the people of the island. Okay, so one thing I've seen people out there do, but I'm, I'm more interested in what you can do. I mean, you are in government. What are no, your I'm plans? not in Well, parliament. you're in parliament, okay. What is your potential? What, you must have so some keep, game plan, is there? All I can do is keep pointing to areas where our current structure is failing, and I'm trying to do that now. Do you sit down with the Council of Ministers or any particular ministers or the Chief Minister? There are, there are, there are some, look, the Chief Minister, I mean, I was, my jaw dropped at the beginning of this administration when you were no longer allowed to use the word smaller, smarter government. I mean, ridiculous that he would brush that aside when it was so significantly important. I, I am worried about the Chief Minister, yes. I mean, he's got to change his 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 position very significantly otherwise we're, we're in difficulty I mean they, they published their way forward way back at the beginning of the administration no 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 that was no no hang on a second no they didn't what they produced was a program for government now that there's nothing wrong with that and I voted for it it yeah. was it was effectively a, a, a good housekeeping guide to a variety of and a myriad of things that needs changing in terms of actions and deliveries. It didn't talk about the fundamentals of how government itself achieved the delivery of those those services and that's what I'm talking about. Mm. This is at, at a much much higher level. Um, um, it's, it's, it's ironic really that 
we're in this position because we do not think strategically about how government works. We think departmentally and divisionally. And the very thing we need to do is create that strategic capacity, which is what Paul Whitfield says here. He, he, he's dispensing effectively with his chief, executive div, chief executives of departments and applying strategic thinkers across whole bands of government. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to pick any individual out, but these are the sort of things that the likes of the chief constable have been talking about for years. I mean, I, I even quoted him in my last manifesto saying, look, there are people in government who know what needs to be done. Now, they need to be listened to now. We need to act. But most of all, we need clarity and purpose out of the Council of Ministers to make this happen. There are members in there who are of like mind. Well, but you have got some supporters. They, it's not about me, Paul. It's about well, no, it's it's not supporting about your need. I mean, of course, it's, you, if you haven't got any traction, we're, we're all just wasting our time, aren't we? Let's face it. If you don't get any traction, someone to make a change, then what's the good thing? Well, know? It's just the, da the damage to the Isle of Man is going to be profound and significant because we cannot move forward um, in, in our present format and still find the funds to, to pay to front and, and services and, and, and technology to deliver to frontline services that, that are absolutely essential. And if we're not careful, in five to ten years' time, we'll be looking back and saying, why on earth we didn't we do this or that or the other? And look how far we've been left behind. This cannot go on. Just to make, explain a bit about it, there's 200 jobs they're talking about. They're looking for voluntary redundancies initially, aren't they, as well? So they, and they're going to pay people out. So there's quite an amount of money that redundancies even cost the system before you can even yeah. see the savings. Yes, um, but, the, the, yeah, but the savings are long term. The, the, yeah. the, the cost, the initial cost is a one-off. Okay. Well, I mean, where do we go besides you saying this? I'm still lost. That we'll be talking about this in a year's time. Well, I'm just, I'm just. You've had enough. I'm, I've had enough. Yes. I mean, just raising the issue yeah. and getting people to understand how important this is, and don't, don't be fooled by short term or, or, you know, in, incremental gains here or there, as, as if somehow everything's all right. You know, there's, there's a major crisis coming down the line about uh, nurse availability, about, you know, being able to uh, pay teachers enough and this sort of thing. That money currently is not in government forward thinking forecasts. It's going to have to be put in. On top of that, we're going to have to pay for a more expensive health service anyway. On top of that, we're going to have to, to find the money for uh, public sector pension uh, you know the, the black hole that occurs there, and if we don't if we don't structure a clear plan to overcome all the, this sort of tsunami of, of of challenge, then we're going to really be impacted in years to come in a very damaging way. Now is the time to act. Now is the time to provide clear leadership, the likes of which Port Paul Whitfield has provided um, to a very high standard in Guernsey. They will make mistakes in Jersey. They will make mistakes in Jersey as they're making these big changes. But that, sh that will not impede them from taking the actions that they need to act. And, and I do please hope that people take this warning to heart and very seriously.